When the word of God goes forth, there's a word for you and there's a word for me. But the question is, do you have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church? If you have an ear to hear, God will speak. He had Taylor made a message just for you. Well, you may say, Pastor, I'm not the only one in the building, but I'm here to say we serve, we serve a God that can speak to all of us. Amen. As Elder Phil Jones will come and stand, God has a word just for you and just for me. Raise your right hand and challenge him. Say, Elder Jones, I need a word from the Lord. Elder Jones, let the Lord use you to bless me with his word. Receive Pastor Resistant the Elder Philip Jones. Give him my hand, please. That was good for me. But give God a hand praise. Give God a hand praise. The one who redeemed you. Hallelujah. The one who sent his son to save you. Come on. Come on, let's lift him up for a few seconds. And give him some glory. Come on, let's lift him up right now and give him some praise. Come on, let's honor and worship him. Come on, let's glorify him. Come on, let's magnify him. Hallelujah, because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we come before you, hallelujah, with humble heart. We come before you laying aside all our weights. God, we come before you just to say thank you for another day. God, you've been so good to us. Now, God, bless this word that you have laid on our spirit. Bless the ears of the people that shall hear this word. Let it fall on fertile soil right now in the name of Jesus. God, we just say thank you right now because you've been so good. And you've been so merciful. Now, God, continue to let your anointing rest upon you. I am decreasing that you will increase. So I shall deliver what you have given unto me to your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord another hand praise. Hallelujah. As I was sitting there, I said, I thank God for Bishop Hamilton. I thank God for Bishop Hamilton. Hallelujah. The pastor emeritus here at Greater Victory, but he's always going to be my pastor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for him. And God has a way of doing things, and he has a time and a season for all things. And if you stay in that time, in that season, when God does some changes, you'll be all right. So I give honor to our newly pastor, Pastor Ronald Britt. Come on, let's celebrate him on today. I give honor to his lovely wife, the fragrance of this house, First Lady Angela Britt, my friend. Hallelujah. Let's give honor to the First Lady. Thank God for our state supervisor of women, Mother Welch. I thank God for our church mother, Mother Lanier. I thank God for all the elders and ministers who minister here. But I thank God especially, hallelujah, for the woman of my life. The one that he gave to me, hallelujah. The apple of my eye, hallelujah. The bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. The rib in my side. Sister Karen Jones, I praise God for her. Hallelujah. Thank God for her. Hallelujah. God is such an awesome God. And as I was praying and asking God, what shall I render to your people? And I had a couple of messages. And I was ready to preach through four. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so as I heard what was going on and what was happening and the things that are happening and the sicknesses that are going on, he said, that's the one. Talk to them about recovery. 
talk to them about recovery, recovery, recovery. So I said, Lord, well, where am I going? He said, go to Joel. Go to Joel. Go to Joel. The second chapter. Where there's some things that was going on in the land. And he had to come and warn the people about some situations and circumstances. But Joel, Joel was a, a minor prophet. Still, his word is true. Joel, the second chapter Joel, 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 J-O-E-L. All right? Before Amos and after Hosea. The second chapter, starting around the 25th verse. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say wait, preacher. Young people, now is the time to get your Bible on your iPhone. Turn it to J-O-E-L. You know, just type it in. And then hit two. And then go to the 25th verse. And then now is the time for you to use your, your iPhone. Get your phone out now. Here's your opportunity that you sit back there and look at it in between services anyway. I'm going to give you an opportunity to read the Word of God. And if you don't have an iPhone or a tablet or your Bible, it's on the screen. We provide every opportunity so we don't want to miss nobody. And the reason why, because I'm going to even read it for you. Joel. The 25th, the second chapter, 25th verse. You guys pray for me because my ears and my head is really plugged up. I can barely hear what I'm saying. And this has been going on for a little while. And I'm kind of wondering, what is it, God? And he said, just keep doing what you're doing. Like I told you to do, get up in the morning. Go to your little secret closet. So you can hear from me. So I'm going to continue in this while it's plugged up. I can still hear God. While I still got a little ailment, I can still hear God. Joel 2, 25 says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, that the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. In other words, God sent it unto the people. But he said, I'm going to restore unto you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to restore it unto you. The years that they took from me. And ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. He said, you ain't going to be hungry no more. You ain't got to worry about it no more. You will be satisfied with what I give you. And praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wonderfully, wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Hallelujah. 27th verse says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and God, and, and then, and none of these, my people, shall never be ashamed. None of these shall never be ashamed. I want to talk to you about recovering it all. Getting it back. The promises that God has given unto you. He said, I will restore unto you. And I looked up the word recovery. 
The word recovery means the act or process of becoming healthy after an illness or injury. Hallelujah. The act or process. And sometimes we don't want to go through the process, Pastor. Once we've had an injury, we don't want to go through the process of rehabilitation. We don't want to go through the physical therapy. Ask me how I know. Because I went through a rigorous physical therapy after I had my surgery. When I had my hip replaced, I went through a process. I had to do some squats. I had to do some leg lifts. I had to do some stretches. I had to go through a process. And today, it still hurts. The pain is still there. But yet, I'm still in the process. And I'm still recovering from that injury. These injuries that happened to me back when I was in high school, they started formulating. Being an athlete, we put our bodies through all kind of different things in different circumstances. But through the process, remember, I'm going to recover. It's also the act of recovering or the act or process of returning to a normal state after difficulty. We know we've been in some difficult times. And as I was just pondering and thinking about how 2015 started and ended. And I thought about, oh, if I could just get to 2016. Because I had some situations and some difficulties happen to me in 2015. The beginning of the year was doing good. Middle of the year was okay. The end of the year kind of got a little rough and rocky. And then December came and seemed like everything broke loose. All kind of situations happened. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, have you heard of Job? I said, yes, Lord. He said, well, I've considered my servant Philip. So you're going to have to go through some situations. So in December, around the beginning, middle of the month, I get up early in the morning, walk down my hallway, and I looked out the window, and I seen the car that my son drives looked like it was missing. So I said, oh, being him, he's been an athlete. He said, I said, well, he may have went to the gym early this morning to work out. Then I looked again, and the car was still there. But the car had been moved between the middle of my driveway, and it was moved from the spot it was in when we went to bed. Somebody had came around the corner, ran into the car, pushed it halfway in my driveway, tore it up, and I walked outside and said, Oh, my God. I went back in the house. I said, PJ, somebody didn't hit your car. He said, not again, Dad. <laughs> yeah, man, they hit your car. So I said, wow. I looked at it. It didn't look too bad. Fender was all up in the air. And bumper was towed halfway off. I looked at it, got out, took some pictures. <clears throat> went through the process, took it to the body shop. The body shop looked at it and said, well, Mr. Jones, it looks like some pretty good damage here, but we'll check it out. They checked it out, and he came back. He said, well, you're about $500 away from the car being total. I said, total? My God! <sighs> total? Really? He said, yeah. He said, but I'm going to contact the insurance company and I'm going to go back and look again. 
He went and looked again. And the insurance company said, well, you better go take another look. So they went and took another look. He said, well, I went back, and now you $500 over. So it's told. It's gone. It's finished. It's over. You don't have that car anymore. I said, man, I had the pink slip on that car. I don't have no payments, man. I don't want to make no payments. He said, no, no, the car's told. They said they're not going to fix it. I said, my God. So that happened. I'm just testifying a little bit right now before we get into it. I'm going to let you know why I feel the way I feel. And so that process happened. And it was difficult. So I dealt with it. It's hard to have three people driving in two cars. It's, it's really tough. So come Christmas, we had a good time. We had a small time. We went up to the Bay Area, enjoy family. The young people, we, we had Christmas with the young people. It was just the young ones there this time. It was amazing. We got back home. Everything was well. I get a phone call from my dear son who was doing a good job. He was working at the food bank, doing some charity work for school. He leaves the house, and he comes back, and he gives me a call. He said, Dad, you need to come home now. I said, why, son? He said, well, somebody done broke into the house. His first instinct was he went in the house, went to the butcher block, Pulled out a weapon. He said, and then he went and proceeded to find out who was in the house. Nobody was in the house, but they left evidence that they had been there. So I get home, and I open the door, and I walk in the house, and I look around, and I said, oh, my God. There were some nice criminals. They left stuff in a neat little pile, mother. They cleared out all the drawers. They stole all my wife's jewelry. All of it. They just cleared her jewelry box out. Then they went in, stole a couple, some little change that we had. Then they went into my little room. Stole all my little jewelry, my little cufflinks, my watches. But then they had the audacity to steal my clergy collar and my cross. They stole all of that. And I said, what are they going to do with that? I said, well, there'll be false prophets in the last day. They will, there'll be false prophets standing up declaring the word of God and don't have no power, no anointing. They're just going to be talking about what they don't know about. I said, my God. So, God, what, what is this? What is going on here? He said, remember Job? I said, yes, God. He said, what Job did, you could do. Because he's already done it. And he laid down an example. And I said, well, Lord, though you slay me, though they take all my possessions, I'm still going to trust you. And so I returned into a state of being that I'm just going to pray my way through this. I'm going to magnify God through this. I'm going to glorify God in this. I'm going to give him honor in every situation. And so when the prophet Joel came, he was talking to the children of praise. He talked to Judah, you people. Y'all praise him. Do I have any praises in the house? Do I have anybody that loves him? He was talking to Judah. And he said, I'm going to restore unto you everything. Yeah. Not some things. Because the canker worm and the palm worm had eaten up all their possessions. Yeah. Everything that they had. Because they lived off the land. They lived off of their possessions that they had in the land. He had eaten them up. And then they came along and ate up the stuff. That they didn't, they left. I'm glad the criminals didn't come back. 
to get some more stuff. But God is an awesome God. He said, but I'm going to restore unto you, and you shall have plenty. Yeah. Ah, that's, yeah. where I, that's where I rejoice right there. Uh-huh. I will have plenty. Yes, I don't have to worry about being a borrower anymore. Yeah. I'm going to be the lender. Yes, I don't have to worry about being second fiddle to anyone. Yes, because God, I know, he's going to restore it all. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. And then my daughter called me and said, Dad. I, I, I was thinking about everything that had happened to you. And this little song kept ringing down in my soul. You shall recover it all. You shall recover it all. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. I shall recover it all. She said, Dad, that's all I can hear is you shall recover it all. Even though you, you've been a nice man. You've been taking care of everything. You don't bother nobody. You tell people about his goodness. You help folks. In your job, you help folks everywhere. He said, but you shall recover it all. Dad, you're going to recover all of this. Don't worry about the material things. Because dust and rust and all that stuff will fade away. But you shall recover it all, Dad. You shall get everything that you need. Everything that you want. All your desires. And in every, every situation that comes up in your life, don't worry about it. Don't worry about nothing. Because God has got you in the palm of his hand. God has got you right where he wants you. God has in a pl- got you in a place where you can hear from him. He's got you in a place that you shall recover everything. You shall survive this. You shall survive this. This situation, this circumstance, this thing in life. God knows all about our struggles and all about our problems. And all about our situations. But the children of Israel didn't understand that there was some darkness that had to come. Every now and then, darkness has to come into your life so you can understand where the light is. So you can get back into a place. So Joel let them know, listen, there's going to be coming some locusts. And they're going to be swarming like armies. And they're going to be all over the place. And they're going to be in a place where you just don't know where they're coming from, but they're going to come everywhere. But be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. When the time comes, when the darkness comes, saints of God. It looks good right now. It looks good right now. But there's some dark days that are going to come. And now is the time for us to bind together and get our troops together, and get our forces together, that we may march in and defeat the enemy. Because I know 2015 was devastating. 2015 had some rough stuff. 2015 brought us through some situations. 2015 was devastating. It was challenging. We had some discouragements. We was deceived. We was in discomfort. We had disbelief. We had disasters. But through it all, through it all, God has been there with us. God has been there with us. And we had a whole lot of D's in our life. D's are passing grade in school. But this D that I'm talking about, we're going to a new dimension. We're going to a new dimension now, y'all. We are getting to a place. We're not going to another level. We're going to a new dimension. Because he said, I will give you dominion. In the beginning, when he wrote the book, he said, I'm going to give you dominion over everything. Every creeping thing. Everything that flies in the air. Everything in the sea. I'm going to give you dominion. We're going to a new dimension. We're going to a new dimension. So if we believe that we're going to a new dimension, we got to read the scripture of what Paul said. He said, brethren, I count not myself to apprehend. But this one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind me, I'm going to press towards the mark. I got to forget about what they stole from me. I got to forget about what they took from me. I got to forget about how they discouraged me. I got to forget about how they misused me. 
How, I got to forget about how they abused me and how they talked about me. I got to forget about how they mistreated me. I got to forget about how they bruised me. And I got to forget, hallelujah, those things which are behind me. Things are only things. But God before me, who can be against me? If God is with me, I'm more than a conqueror. If God said I can, you can't say that I can't. If God is with me, I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to worry about that. Because this and that will pass away. But heaven and earth is going to pass away. But the word of God shall remain. It shall continue. It shall be, hallelujah, like the bright, shining sun. It'll be howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. When I get over into the land of promise, when I see him face to face, I don't have to worry about getting a new car. I don't have to worry about buying a new house. I don't have to worry about being sick anymore. I don't have to worry about having any more illnesses. I don't have to worry about recovering at all. Because I shall have everything I need according to his riches and glory. So I don't have to worry about the canker worm, that it ate up everything. I don't have to worry about the palmer worm that destroyed my crop. I don't have to worry about none of these things because God is with me. So he said, I'm going to restore unto you the joy of your salvation. Sometimes they can take your joy, but God said, I'm going to restore your joy back. Sometimes they can take your peace. But God said, I'm going to restore your peace that surpasses all your understanding. Sometimes they're going to take your, your, your loving kindness. But he said, with loving kindness, have I drawn you. They can't take things what God gives. God gives us strength from on high. God gives us power to walk upright. God gives us joy, inexplicable joy, and full of glory. God will take care of you. God will see you through. God will provide for you. God will, hallelujah, do these things. But you got to do some things. You got to do some things. And he told him, Joel, he said, call for a solemn assembly. Uh -huh. We're assembled here, but is it solemn? We're gathered here today, but is it solemn? Then he told him, you need to fast. Yeah. Now is the time. I know our consecration is coming. And we're going to set aside and it's already on the schedule. But God sent me here today to let you know. Yeah. Now is the time to start fasting. Yes, sir. Now is the time to start praying. Now is the time to get prepared for the rest of the year. Yeah. Scheduling is great, and I thank God that it's already on the schedule. Because he said, prepare your way. Yeah. Scheduling is great, but God said, now is the time. I'm coming to let you know, start fasting now. Yeah. Start praying now. Start repenting now. Start mourning now. Start talking about it now. So when you get to that time, you will be able to stand. Because the enemy is not going to wait on your schedule. He's trying to attack now. He's attacking our bodies. He's attacking our communities. He's attacking our homes. He's attacking our churches. He's trying to even attack our spirit. But God said, no, I'm with you. You're going to recover it all. You're going to recover it. But now is the time to start fasting. Now is the time to start praying. Now is the time to get about our Father's business. Because these things were spoken. Hallelujah. And after you've done that, 
He said, my sons and daughters will prophesy. He said, young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. And my handmaidens and my servants and my preachers and teachers will prophesy. All these things are going to come to pass in the last days. And I've been looking at our last days. And our last days are getting grim. Murderers and drunkards and things that are going on in the world. But when was the last time the church was drunk in the spirit? Ah. When was the last time somebody said, they must have new wine and they must be drunk? When was the last time somebody stood up like Peter did and said, no, they're not drunk as you suppose. They're not drunk as you suppose. This is what was prophesied by Job in the last days when he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. People of God, he is asking us to turn, get back to the place where he can talk to you so you can recover it all. Don't think for one moment that he's not with you. Don't think for not one moment. Don't get discouraged for what it looks like. For what it looks like. It looks like the enemy's winning. It looks like. It looks like Satan has defeated us. It looks like we're divided. It looks like that. But I'm here to tell you today, we're not divided. We're not divided. We're not divided. Hallelujah. We're not divided. Because God is the center. And if he be the head, we can't be if we have him in our heart. So God said, recover it. Come back. His promises are yea and amen. We're going to get houses that we didn't even build. We're going to have jobs that we didn't even create. We wouldn't even qualify for them. But God said, I'm going to give them to you just because I promised you. Long as you stay humble before his hand, I will exalt you in due time. We all have a due time coming. Just stay humble. We got a due time coming. Just stay humble. Stay humble before him and let him do the exalting. I'm finished, but God's not. I'm finished, but God's not. He's not through with me. He that begun a good work in me shall perform until the day of Jesus Christ. So don't worry. Mothers in Zion, keep on praying. Fathers with gray hair and wisdom, keep on holding us up. Keep on talking to us and letting us know, young fella, I got some knowledge underneath this hair. Uh-huh. Let me share it with you. Young people, stay encouraged. Don't think for a minute that we stop praying for you. Don't think for a minute just because you go through a little bit of struggle and a little bit of situation. We've been there. However old you are, I had to go past that to get to where I'm at today. So I had to go through some things. I had to go through some situations. And some things that I went through, I hope nobody have to go through it. I hope nobody have to go through some of the things that I had to go through.
to get to where I am. Hallelujah. To get to this place. Tears in my eyes. Broken hearted. But God be God. I don't have to worry about nothing. I don't have to worry about nothing because he said, I'm going to restore. Hallelujah. I'm going to restore, restore, restore. I'm going to get back to you. Hallelujah. The difficult things that you had to go through. Because you were willing to go through them. You were willing to praise me in the midst of it. Hallelujah. We're standing. Somebody here on today has been struggling with last year's stuff. Somebody here has been really struggling with last year's stuff. Some decisions that was made last year. But God said, today, let it go. Today, let it go. Let it go today. You've been persecuted. You've been talked about. You've been lied on, mistreated. Kids not acting right, failing in school, all kind of turmoil on the job. God said today, let it go. In order for you to get the other stuff that you need that he's going to restore to you, you got to get rid of some old stuff. Hallelujah. So I thank God. My wife got rid of some stuff involuntary. She didn't want to get rid of it that way. But greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Uh huh. I didn't want to get rid of some things that I gotten rid of or that they took. But greater is coming. And so I said, God, what what was the real why 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 the clergy? Why the clergy stuff? And sometimes we put on stuff just because. And it because of the title warrants us to put that on. And sometimes God says it's time to take it off. Just leave and go to work. Get about my business. It's good in this place, but don't worry about that. That doesn't take a call that I have on your life away from you. That don't take the charge that I have on your life to minister to folks. So he said, don't worry about that stuff. That stuff. But call and talk and minister. People that told me to go to the, to the, what is that, the pawn shops to see if you can't find your stuff. Go look over here and see if you can't get your stuff back. I even went to the neighbor's house. They had a surveillance camera. And we watched them go in. And we watched them come out. And they were in my house all of 15 minutes. And I said, my God. 15 minutes. And then they had the audacity to take our bags, put the stuff in our bags, and walk out the front door as if they lived there. So somebody today is struggling with the devil has stolen your joy and stolen your peace and stolen your long suffering 
And he put it in one of your bags. And he walked right out the front door and took everything that you had. And it put you in a depressed state. It put you in a state of, I'm going to get it back. Let that go. Because he's going to give you some new stuff. If you're here today, you're struggling. The altar is open for you. Everybody got it all jammed up. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. I'm glad that you don't have to worry about nothing. Because you've already prayed and he's already taken care of it. Grab that hand that's close to you. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you right now for this hand that I'm holding, God. It's a miracle. It's a promise. It's somebody that has feelings. It's somebody that hurt it at one time in their life. It was somebody that was disappointed, discouraged. They had some disbelief. But God, right now, I thank you for restoring them the joy and the peace and the long suffering. I thank you for restoring unto them everything that was stolen. Hallelujah. And God, we thank you right now for these your people have come before you with a pure and clear heart that they're going to go on and serve you and do the will of God that has sent them. God, we thank you right now because the promise that you made to us. If we delight in you, if we delight in you, and if we seek ye first, your kingdom and all your righteousness, everything shall be given unto us. Now look at your neighbor right now and clap your hands and tell him, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And we're going to recover it all. We're going to recover it all.